Some people consider 3 a.m. to be the spirit's time to communicate with us. Others think it's the devil's mark. Some even think that when you wake up at this time, someone is watching you. But if someone were to be watching you, how would they watch you if there were no windows or doors in the room you were in? There are many superstitions for what 3 a.m. could be. I'm going to tell you the real meaning of this worldwide time myth. While you sleep soundly, you dream. While you dream, you are unaware of your surroundings, unaware of what could be lurking in the closet, under your bed, beside you in your covers. Your eyes flutter open, and you check the time on either your watch, cell phone, alarm clock, or simply whatever you have lying around that has the time displayed on it. But knowing the time doesn't really matter, right? You rub your eyes and blink a few times, adjusting to the darkness of your room. You hear the sounds of floorboards creaking, the sound of pitter-patter along the ground. I'm sure it's just a mouse, you think to yourself. Maybe it's just a mouse, or a large rat. A very large rat, indeed, to be making such loud footsteps. You dare not look over the edge of your bed, for you are paralyzed in your fear. You're just scaring yourself. Enough already with this foolishness, you tell yourself. But is it foolishness? Or is there a reason to be scared? Are there monsters under the bed, waiting to snatch your feet and pull you under the bed when you get up in the middle of the night? to use the restroom, or get a drink of water. You do not believe in monsters. Those were stories that your mother and father told you years ago as a child. The Boogeyman, Sandman, and other monster stories were just stories to give you a spook, right? Yeah, right. Monsters aren't real, you think, and chuckle at your childish fears. But wait. What was that? That pitter of feet seemed to be getting closer. You squeeze your eyes tightly shut as you hear the long, loud screech of your door creaking open ever so slowly. Was that a giggle you just heard? No, of course not. Mice don't giggle. Neither do rats. You're being delusional. You open your eyes slowly and stare at your ceiling. There is no movement under your covers, the covers that you stay under to provide you warmth and comfort. It's moving towards you slowly, in a crooked fashion. It looks as if it's limping beneath the blankets. You are frozen in terror, afraid to move or else you might give away your location. You feel something tugging at the loose clothes that you wear. Oh Jesus, what was that? You yank away the covers and throw them to the ground, and gasp at what you see. The creature is lopsided, grotesque in a way that makes your stomach turn in knots. It wears torn fabric that looks hundreds of years old. It tilts its head to the right and gives you a crooked smile. Its dark eyes without pupils stare at you, unblinking. You slowly begin to push yourself into a sitting position backing away from the creature. This doesn't seem to bother it, though. It simply limps closer and closer to you, until it has reached your leg. It pulls itself onto you and begins to crawl, slowly, oh so slowly. It bears that crooked, toothy grin. Its gray skin hangs from its bony body. It smells horrid, a smell you've not come to face before. But you know this smell, even without having smelled it before. It's the smell of rot. But not like any rot. The stingy scent of rot, flesh, and blood. What are you going to do? You think, and lick your lips, eyes wide, not removing them from the creature. It's still inching its way up your body coming closer and closer to your face with each limping step. You take in a deep breath through your nose, 
and then release a scream, so loud, you think you have popped your own eardrums. The creature suddenly jerks its head towards the door and lets out a murderous cry. It quickly limps to the edge of the bed and jumps, landing on the floor with a thump. It rushes out the door and disappears into the dark of the hallway. You see, three in the morning is when the little things come out to play. When the little things decide it's your lucky day. When the little things show themselves. But don't let this deceive you. The first time you see them is almost certainly the last. You are lucky if you can get away safely. I cannot tell you how to deal with the little things, for they are everywhere. In every home, every hole, nook and cranny your house has. How many you have in your home is not a question answered easily. All I can tell you is that there are many. They study you, and they plan your demise. No wonder they reek of death.